Uh, good morning and welcome to the session on um, Keys to Supernatural Ministry. We'll pray and go into our discussion. Let's pray together. Would someone like to lead? Rin? Jesus, we thank you for this uh, time that we have to come together and to study uh, your word. And Lord, I pray that as Pastor Nancy teaches us, I pray that we would uh, be able to understand and also apply in our lives. And uh, thank you, Jesus, for a good time that we would have in your name. I pray. Amen. Amen. So in the last class, we had uh, some discussions about what is supernatural ministry and why um, there are hindrances to believing in the supernatural. We also looked at the fact that um, uh, miracles and supernatural happenings are quite important in scripture. Jesus did say that those who believe in him will walk in the supernatural. So we'll kind of build on it. We'll come to the keys um, in a class or two. But today, I just want to reiterate the fact that you know, there is a possibility of a supernatural life and ministry. So each believer, we need not let go of this power of God and just believe that, you know, we have to live our lives in our own strength, in our own capacity. Uh, but instead, as we go by what God is saying in his word, definitely he has given us that authority to walk in the supernatural. So let's just look at uh, some of the scriptures today. We'll see how Jesus spoke to his disciples and what is it that he commanded them? What is it that he, um, uh, or, or the boundaries in which he asked them to function when it comes to the supernatural? So let's look at this incident in Matthew chapter 10. I would need people to read the uh, scriptures today, so please be ready. So Matthew chapter 10, verse 1, and then verse 7 and 8. One of us can turn to it. Matthew chapter 10, verse mm -hmm. 1. Jesus called his 12 disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and illness. 7 and 8. As you go, proclaim his message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal those who are ill. Raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy. Drive out demons freely. You have received freely. Give. Mm. Yeah. So thank you, um, Nikhil, for reading these scriptures. We see the mandate that he gave his disciples. So these are the 12 disciples okay, uh, whom he had chosen. Jesus was already moving in the supernatural. And there are so many miracles that he did. He preached and he healed. We read about those instances. But then in this situation, he is calling his 12 disciples and he gives them power. Or he gives them the authority, right? Exousia. He gives them the gives them the authority. That word power there is exousia. He gives them the authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. So why is it that um, uh, he is delegating this responsibility to his disciples? What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. So one thing is Jesus is teaching and then he is giving them opportunities where they can experience the power of God the through the authority that has been given to them. So while he was there, from that time, he wants them to move in signs, wonders, miracles, healings. Uh, so we saw in the verses that are listed out, right? What did he... Uh, say he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out then heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease then what else is there part of it uh, in verse 7 he said preach the kingdom of God is at hand and verse 8 again heal the sick cleanse the leper 
raise the dead cast out demons freely you have received freely give so jesus is wanting them to exercise that authority exercise that power you know power we know that word uh, is dunamis and he wants his disciples to exercise both authority as well as power and see all the things that can happen through it we listed out now healings um healing cleansing of the lepers raising of the dead even casting out demons so at least four things are listed but we know that much more is possible through the authority and power which jesus gave his disciples so this is nothing new jesus did not keep the power all to himself he wanted it to be given to his disciples that's how he trained them now let us look how is it that he is treating others luke chapter 10 let's go to luke chapter 10 and can somebody read please verse 1 and then verse 17 through 19 luke chapter 10 sorry luke 10 Luke ten verse one. After these things, the Lord appointed seventy others also, and sent them two by two before His face mm. into every city and place where He Himself was about to go. Verse seventeen. Then the seventy returned with joy, saying, "Lord, even the demons are subject to us in Your name." And He said to them, "I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold." I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Okay so we um can understand and accept that he gave authority to his disciples but who are these people these are also his disciples but not the close circle of 12 outside of that close circle 70 others and Jesus never felt insecure to you know just share his power uh, we may wonder when we look at others you know who uh, are so called uh, you know moving in the supernatural like uh, you know what i'm i'm not talking about believers but i'm just saying like in general we see those who have some kind of supernatural power they may want to keep it to themselves and keep the secrets of what makes them so powerful but Jesus freely gave to his disciples freely you have received freely give and then our question is that okay maybe his exclusive group he wants to give them he doesn't want to give it to the others but in Luke 10 he appointed 70 others and sent them two by two okay and what do they go and do in verse 17 they returned with joy saying demons are subject to us in your name meaning they were casting out demons in the name of jesus they were carrying the authority of the name of jesus and um, they were amazed at what the authority of the name of jesus could do so they come back and they give a joyful report okay uh, so jesus did not hold on to that authority instead he wanted people to flow in it why why did jesus want people to flow in that authority because yes that is his desire that everyone should um express we'll see what exactly that term is called sonship glory okay sonship glory so we'll look at a couple of uh, scriptures regarding that let's now read from Okay, John seventeen, verses five and twenty-two. John seventeen five, and now Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. Verse twenty-two, I have given them the glory that you have you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. Hmm. So Jesus is talking about. going back to the father to regain his glory he had a heavenly glory when we read philippians chapter 2 we see that he left behind his glory and he became a man so when he became a man in his earthly um form he did not carry that heavenly glory 
Okay, so that is very clear. But Jesus is talking about having that heavenly glory restored. But at the same time, he says, I, you know, give them that glory which you have given me. So what is that other glory that he's talking about, which he carried on the earth and he wants his people to walk in? That is what we term as sonship glory. So there is a certain glory in which the Lord Jesus walked and he wants us to walk in that glory. And that is exactly the reason why he wanted his 12 disciples to walk in that glory. He wanted his 70 others to walk in that glory. Now, we looking at all these people, we can still accept it and say, these are the disciples of Jesus. They were with Jesus. That's why he told them to walk in that glory. But notice there was a man who was unrecognized among the disciples, meaning he was probably an outsider who knew about Jesus, but believed in Jesus. Even that man was walking in miracles. So let's read from Mark 9, verse 38 to 40. Mm. 38 to 40. Hmm. So even okay, read forty also. Okay, so Jesus is accepting of a third person flowing in miracles, flowing in the supernatural. He's not stopping it because that's the way it's supposed to be. Because that person also is a believer, even though he's not a, like a direct disciple um, in that group of disciples, he still believes and Jesus says, don't stop him. So what if he's doing the miracles? Uh, he's still a part of us. He's not against us, right? So this gives us an idea that this is God's desire. He really wanted everyone to flow in miracles, everyone who believed in him, whether it is the close circle or you know some person outside of the disciples group. And uh, we are not just limited to the time when Jesus and his disciples lived. In fact, in the Great Commission, he told us that everyone who comes, those who believe, will also be doing these wonderful and powerful works. So let's just read that portion again. It is in Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. Uh, I would request us to read into the mic because that will be helpful for the online students. Yeah. Matthew chapter 28 was from verse 18. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go forth and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all the things that I have commanded you. And I am with you always, even in the end of the age. Amen. Amen. So it says you're teaching them to observe all things I have commanded you. All things I have commanded you earlier, we saw what he commanded his disciples to do. He commanded them to move in the supernatural. So he's saying, as you make more disciples, ensure that you teach them everything that I've taught you. So he taught about the kingdom of God. He taught about uh, heaven and hell. He taught about uh, good stewardship. There were many teachings that Jesus gave, but he definitely commanded or commissioned his disciples to flow in the supernatural. So we can't leave that out and only do the teachings of Jesus because he accepted even an unknown man, so to speak, you know, who was flowing in the supernatural. Uh, now let's talk a little bit more in depth about the sonship glory. Uh, we mentioned that, you know, the Lord Jesus came to reveal his glory, reveal the glory of God, but he also carried his own glory. Um, so let's look at 
the life of Jesus and the first time when he revealed that glory um, in the form of God's power. So we look at two passages, John chapter 1 verse 14 and then John chapter 2 and verse 11. First one is John 1 14, the second is John 2 11. John chapter 1, mm. verse 14. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Mm. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Mm. So we have seen his glory. What glory is this? Obviously, it's not heavenly glory because he left behind his heavenly glory. It's a certain glory that he carries on the earth, which we already uh, talked of it as a sonship glory, right? So we beheld him full of grace and truth. How is this glory? Full of grace and truth. So it projects the nature of God to us. So in John chapter 2 and verse 11, there is a mention after Jesus did a miracle that he revealed his glory. So can we read that? John 2 verse 11. This beginning of signs, Jesus did in Cana of Galilee mm. and manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him. Okay. So we beheld his glory full of grace and truth. And now he manifested his glory. How did he manifest his glory? He could manifest his glory through good works. Yeah, good works. But this specific one is turning water into wine. So that miracle is being told as manifesting the glory. So today, when we want to manifest the glory of God, it's, it's so clear that miracles manifest the glory of God. So we must uh, expect you know, miracles to take place. We must expect uh, God to intervene in supernatural ways in people's lives. Uh, and we already read that passage in John chapter 17 where he says, okay, Father, restore, uh, like, um, uh, give my glory. I'll come back. You know, you restore that glory to me. But the glory which you have given me, I'm giving them. Which means now that sonship glory is what he's expecting us to walk in. There are further passages in the uh, notes there and uh, no need to read it. Uh, so just one uh, scripture I'll highlight on 1 John 4 17 it says as he was so are we in this world as he was so are we in this world meaning the glory with which Jesus walked we need to walk in that glory today in this world so uh, that is God's expectation Jesus already said I'm giving them that glory the, the glory which you gave me I'm giving it to them. And just the way Jesus was in his character, in uh, you know his um, uh, power, in his uh, purity, we can discuss different aspects about Jesus and say, this is how Jesus was, but so should we be in this world. And that's what God wants for us to be like Jesus, to walk like Jesus, and one very um, integral part of that is to walk in the supernatural. So we cannot deny the supernatural when we talk about the glory of God. Um, now, the question is, can we? Can we walk in the power of God? Yes, but. <laughs> yes, but. <laughs> what is the but? Reasons why... It feels challenging to walk in the glory. What what are those um, concerns? Okay, we should have the intimacy with God. Okay. Yes. Mm. Okay, uh, we must have intimacy with God, be able to spend lots of time, um, then preparation, prepare our hearts. Okay. 
okay we should have the faith huh faith and uh, uh, be able to take the risk to move in the supernatural sure so yeah these are these are the things right that uh, will really help us live it out we know we have to but then do we know that we can okay uh, if we are walking in all these things yes we should be able to demonstrate the supernatural and i just want to remind us that the bible says that god has given us the power it's not like you know god asks us to do something which we can't do now this for me was a very powerful revelation one sunday long back um, in north church i had just sort of started attending that uh, location um, pastor in a sermon he shared shared this he said if there is something in the bible that god says you do this okay it's because you can do it god will never tell you to do something which you cannot because it's not logical i it hit me like a thunderbolt that day i was like actually you know if there's anything that god is calling us to do it's because we can and so if there is sonship glory and he's telling us go make disciples teaching them um teach them everything that i've taught you uh, and do all these supernatural works it's because we can and there is a powerful scripture that uh, reminds us of this this is in second peter chapter 1 and verse 3 if uh, somebody would like to read it you can yes as this as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue mm. so we are told here that his divine power has given us all things right uh, pertaining to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue so first of all god has given us all these things and through the knowledge of our lord jesus christ he has even called us by glory so it it's just meaning to say that god empowers us and god has given us through himself whatever it is that we need to walk in the supernatural so that's one thing to settle in our minds that yes we can okay and um, even i mean i am just digressing a little bit like even in terms of calling um somewhere i used to wonder can i can i do this uh, yeah you know god wants me to do but can i yes if he's calling you to do something it's because you can okay so that um confidence and that uh, assurance in our hearts is required it's only then that we can um really begin to flow in what god has in store for us so to be convinced it's one thing to know yeah god expects this of us it's in the bible but it's in the bible it's not in my heart i'm not yet convinced that's not helpful but when i'm convinced that yes and coming to the supernatural jesus asked his disciples jesus told oh, everyone who believes will move in the supernatural and uh, he has given us the sonship glory as he was in 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 this world so are we uh, so yes you know we can do this and god is calling us to do this because the way jesus came to reveal the glory of the father today you and i we are the ones to reveal the glory of the father so yesterday we had this session right where people were sharing testimonies um for the on campus students we had one session but in that session i was just thinking as different people were sharing so many of them said that uh, uh, i didn't know jesus and uh, you know somebody said this or uh, somebody prayed for me some pastor gave a prophetic word um something like that when i felt see some someone has ministered by the power of the spirit into their lives which has made all the difference what if that one person did not prophesy or that one person did not pray for healing or you know and we don't even know who these people are some neighbor 
some pastor some friend but it's because people are walking in the glory of god that there are others who have now come to believe in christ because they, they saw the power of god and yesterday i was amazed how people were saying you know um, i got healed of this i my father got healed of that and then we believed in jesus so it's because the glory was demonstrated that they came to faith in christ um so i mean something to think about i'm not saying every testimony is like the same thing there can be other kinds of testimonies but my observation yesterday was that somebody ministered the power of god into the lives of these people and so now here they are wanting to not just follow but to serve god um so we should not stop telling people about god or praying for people and uh, trusting god for miracles is what i told myself uh, yesterday so god is looking for the church that is you and me to demonstrate the power if we are not moving in power we are not doing god's work and it is the power that's impacting okay um so let's remind ourselves it's possible to walk in the supernatural and that is why god is telling us to do it right um and uh, yeah i mean we can go on with so many testimonies i have my own testimonies to talk about the power of god and how you know it that's what um has like even the way we came into the faith was because um it my um uh, grandmom she was going to die of a terminal condition and uh, she was fairly young at that time but somebody in her village came and preached about jesus to her and um, i mean it's a whole story in itself that uh, she didn't understand a thing but after that person came spoke and went um in her weakest condition like they were expecting her like maybe 2 3 days she'll pass away but she had a vision of uh, jesus and she never knew jesus because she's not even from a bible reading sort of a community but she described the exact image of that man you know a man with long hair and this and that and all which is in the bible which she had no idea about and later they told her oh you're talking about jesus jesus healed you so that uh, in the vision like jesus um, healed her uh, and uh, it translated into her real life she physically also got healed after that happened and you know she believed and then so many others believed and that's how like you know so uh, for me i heard the gospel so to see that people have walked in these things uh, even in our own lives is very encouraging uh, because it confirms the word of god when jesus told even in the great commission he said you know you go make disciples teach them everything that i've taught you one of which is to demonstrate the power of god and when it happens surely god's glory is revealed uh, god's greatness is revealed and uh, it's uh, life transforming we are empowered by the holy spirit that we all know and we you know talk uh, so much about it here uh, in the life of jesus also he was empowered by the holy spirit remember he went fasted 40 days he came and in the synagogue when he read from the scriptures uh he said the spirit of the lord is upon me as he quoted uh, from a passage in isaiah so how did he do his ministry you know preach the good news to the poor and set, set the captives free heal the broken hearted by the power of the holy spirit he began by saying the spirit of the lord is upon me and through the anointing he was able to do the supernatural works of god and even when he cast out a demon in matthew chapter 12 um he said that he did it by the power of the spirit he did it by the holy spirit so by the holy spirit jesus performed all these wonderful miracles for us as believers you know he wants us to move in these things not you know just like that he empowers us for it so acts 1 verse 8 uh, this is the time when jesus is with the disciples in the last moments uh, in in some time he will go to heaven and um, he needs to tell them the most important things okay at that time he tells them wait till you receive power from on high 
the Holy Spirit will come upon you and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So he is saying that the disciples can flow powerfully just the way he did. But for that, they need something. And what is that? The baptism in the Holy Spirit, which is the empowerment of the Holy Spirit to demonstrate this, uh, you know, this glory that we are all talking about. So for us to flow in the sonship glory, what do we need? One very critical thing is baptism in the Holy Spirit, because we don't see the disciples flowing in the miraculous powerfully um, before that. Yes, through the authority, there were some demonstrations of healings and miracles and all. But Jesus told them, you better wait. Wait. Okay. After you receive this um, endowment from heaven, you go. You will be my witnesses. And witnesses is like witnesses by fire. And then when you read the book of Acts, after Acts chapter 2, the people that you read about earlier are different. And the entire scene changes with demonstrations of power right through the apostles and then eventually you find lots of believers coming into the picture who are also able to do powerful things for god yeah so um what made the difference the baptism in the holy spirit so the same thing applies for us today you know when we trust god to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit, um, we also will be able to move in the supernatural. All right. So, uh, any, yeah, yeah, sure. Mm. Baptism in the, yeah, I can just. I mean, the question is uh, is the baptism of the Holy Spirit is equal to the anointing, anointing of, of the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Okay. So when we talk about anointing, we'll come to it later. It's a very broad term. Uh, while it's okay to say the baptism in the Holy Spirit is anointing, it, we'd rather just call it the baptism in the Holy Spirit because uh, there are uh, two anointings that we will refer to, the anointing within and the anointing upon. Yeah. So then there'll be some confusion. Because there's already an anointing within, which Apostle John writes about. Uh, in John, I think 1 John uh, 2, uh, if I'm not wrong, that's where he mentions about the anointing will teach you all things. Mm. Okay, which is nothing but the presence of indwelling, the Holy Spirit, indwelling presence, presence of, of the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, I mean, so, upon... but these are two separate things. That's why yeah. I'm saying if you just use the word anointing, uh, it's not like exact or accurate. So when we talk about baptism in the Holy Spirit, better to call it baptism in the Holy Spirit okay. than anointing. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when we are talking about this uh, walking in sonship glory, hmm. like is it interconnected to this uh, water? I mean, Holy Spirit baptism in any way? Uh, we, can you please come again? This uh, walking in the sonship glory. Hmm. So is any way this one interconnected to this? Uh, Holy Spirit baptism? Yes, it is connected because baptism in the Holy Spirit uh, is that distinct experience after which the believers started manifesting the supernatural, isn't it? Very powerfully. Earlier, you can say that with the authority that Jesus gave, yes, they went, they cast out some demons in the name of Jesus. They were able to do all those things to some extent. But uh, in fullness, that demonstration of the power only happened after Acts 2. The way Peter stands up and, you know, he preaches and all the miracles, signs, wonders, all that take place. So, uh, when we talk about sonship glory, remember John 2.11. With that miracle, Jesus manifested his glory, it says. So, it doesn't mention it like that for let's say the teachings of jesus or the goodness of jesus or the good works of jesus but it's specifically saying for the miracle that jesus manifested his glory so when we are saying sonship glory yes miracles are a huge part of it i come yeah. in see ma'am uh yeah. sonship glory yeah glory is different sonship glory is different mm. i mean uh sonship glory being identified as a i'm a son of god is like it is different right it's not only that doing uh, manifesting glory and all right mm -hmm. so we can we can be identified as a son of god 
like how jesus came yeah glory i mean we can we can speak about this uh, manifestations and healings and miracles yes but as as we come to sonship glory we can take all this identity in christ yeah that's what i'm saying i'm <laughs> saying that uh, miracles are a part i'm not saying that miracles are the only thing okay but because so clearly in john 2:11 for a miracle it says jesus manifested his glory so if i say that uh, all this healing supernatural and all is not the glory then i'm wrong but it is part of the glory isn't it so as much as we talk about the character of god identity of god you know john 1:14 we beheld his glory full of grace full of truth we can't subtract miracles so it's very much a part of it yes it is definitely it is yeah so if you are talking about manifesting the sonship glory we should be manifesting everything virtues as well as power both we can't leave either glory itself is a manifestation of something yeah we'll come to that glory when we use the term glory glory is like um manifesting is not supernatural but even who he is in yeah the speaking not only manifestation coming in this hmm hmm yeah 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 yes 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 yeah yeah so we are saying Uh, the supernatural, along with everything else, which is part of the glory of God. Yeah, definitely. So we cannot leave out anything. Yeah. So talking about the supernatural, I said that we are empowered, empowered by the uh, Holy Spirit, uh, and uh, we also have authority that we receive from uh, God. We know that Jesus said we can use His name. so in my name uh, even uh, we we find ha huh? sorry demons. cast out demons yes right so and these signs shall follow those who believe so the authority of god we demonstrate because he vested that authority in us through the name of jesus uh, and um, you know who we have become uh, in christ we have is we have uh, uh, authority as heirs of god as sons of god obviously we have authority we have delegated authority because jesus said you go in my name you do the, these things so he sent us the way the father sent him he sent us we have delegated authority so we have all those dimensions of authority as well which we have studied about earlier uh, so because of the authority because of the baptism in the holy spirit as the gifts of the holy spirit are activated in us we can demonstrate the power of god um, which is i would again say the a part of the sonship glory yeah right so yeah any other we are quite clear that jesus always invited his disciples to walk in that glory and uh, today he wants us to walk in that glory as well so chapter john 17 only john 17 this okay so uh, is in this particular course you mean uh, i don't think that um, the content in this course elaborates on sonship glory but you can look at resources on apcw.org i think there is a sermon on sonship glory so you can read it okay i'll just go to the chat quickly because there is a comment by jackin uh, who says um, our own doubts and unbelief can keep us from moving freely in the supernatural yes that's right so you know that's why we are saying faith would be one of the keys that we will study uh, to move in the supernatural and nina is asking can we say glory is the manifest presence of god in our lives which is seen in both virtue and operating in the 
gifts what if there is not that much of the miraculous operating always okay so meena will come to glory glory is uh, yes it is the manifest presence of god but we we notice that in the glory the mir miraculous signs do happen a lot of miracles happen in the glory okay so again we will explain the distinction between we can simply say presence of god we are experiencing the presence of god so in the presence of god um as you're suggesting you know maybe we have some miraculous but uh, not so much but whenever we use the term glory glory is the heightened presence of god where even sovereign works of god can take place whether there's faith or no faith okay so uh, in the biblical context when we say that we are experiencing the glory of god uh, it's a very intense presence of god which is connected to the operation of the miraculous so it cannot be without the operation of the miraculous okay so i'll just state that much for now i hope uh, it is clear is that okay nina okay sure thank you all right so um all right i'll just stop here then we can think about what we have built so far and uh, from the next class we'll go into the keys finally it's time to <laughs> take a hold of the keys which we are waiting for yes we'll talk about how to be sensitive to the holy spirit okay so let's close with a word of prayer um, maybe yeah anyone can pray uh, lord jesus uh, we come before you lord father in the name of your beloved son god Jesus, we thank you for this session, O oh Lord Father. Thank you for everything that you have taught us, God. Jesus, uh, what we have learned, O oh Lord Father. Jesus, we pray, O oh Lord Father, it will not be just a knowledge to us, O oh Lord Father, but help us uh, to implement in our lives, O oh Lord Father, and walk in it, O oh Lord Father, God, so that we can uh, represent your glory, O oh Lord Father, and walk in the sonship glory, O oh Lord Father, that you have given us, O oh Lord Father. We just uh, surrender everything to your hands, O oh Lord Father, God. Give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And thank you. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. Have a good day and a good weekend.